Let me start with something that might sound strange coming from a tech channel. The biggest problem with smart glasses was never the technology. It was the fact that most people simply didn't want to wear them. Not on their face, not in public, not every day. And that's why I think 2026 is such an interesting year for smart glasses, Guillaume. Not because something dramatic is launching, but because the industry finally seems to understand that problem. For years, everyone has been waiting for the iPhone moment for smart glasses. The big reveal, the product that suddenly makes everything click. But the more you look at what's actually happening right now, the clearer it becomes that 2026 isn't about a single breakout device. It's about a reset in priorities. Instead of asking, how advanced can we make this? Companies are finally asking a much harder question. How do we make this something people actually live with? And once you look at smart glasses, through that lens, what Meta, Google, and Samsung are doing in 2026 starts to make a lot more sense. This video isn't about hype or future promises, it's about understanding direction. Because if you're someone who's confused by smart glasses, or skeptical, um, or quietly interested, um, but not convinced, um, by the end of this, you'll have a much clearer idea of where things are actually headed, and why this year matters more than it looks. Let's start with the question I've seen come up the most lately. If 2026 isn't the big AR year, then what is it? The answer is simpler than people expect. 2026 is the year companies stop trying to impress you and start trying not to annoy you. And nowhere is that more obvious than with Meta. For a long time, Meta was the company making the loudest promises about augmented reality, prototypes, demos, long-term visions, and for a while it felt like they were always on the verge of something huge. But um, here's the reality check. Um, 2026 is not Meta's year for full AR glasses, and that's not a failure. It's a decision. What Meta is actually doing right now is doubling down on the one type of smart glasses that already exist in the real world. Glasses that don't try to replace your phone, don't flood your vision with graphics, and don't demand attention every second. Instead of building glasses that do everything, Meta is refining glasses that do very little. Yeah, on purpose. A small display off to the side, quick glances, short responses, navigation cues, AI answers when you ask for them, nothing immersive, nothing cinematic, and that restraint is the point. Meta already knows how hard true AR is, they've built the prototypes, they know how heavy they are, how power hungry they are, how socially awkward they feel outside of demos, so instead of forcing that future early, Meta is using 2026 to normalize the idea of glasses as an interface at all. Can people live with a tiny display on their face? Like, can voice interaction feel natural instead of awkward? Can glasses fade into the background instead of demanding attention? Those are the problems Meta is trying to solve first. And once you realize that, their strategy stops looking slow and starts looking cautious in a good way. So like, now compare that with Google. If Meta's approach is about comfort and normalization, Google's approach is about usefulness without visibility. Google learned a very public lesson the first time around with smart glasses. They weren't just early, they were early in the wrong way. Too visible, too strange, too disconnected from everyday needs. This time, Google isn't chasing visuals first, they're chasing assistance. Um, in 2026, Google's smart glasses strategy is built around the idea that glasses don't need to show you things to be helpful. Sometimes the best interface is one that doesn't show anything at all. Audio first glasses, always listening, always aware. Helping you understand what you're looking at or where you're going without lighting up your vision. And when Google does add displays, they're keeping them minimal, glanceable, optional, easy to ignore. This isn't Google trying to wow people, it's Google trying to disappear. What makes this especially important is what's happening behind the scenes with Android XR. This isn't just a new platform, it's Google rebuilding the foundation they never fully finished the first time. Android XR is meant to scale slowly, um, from audio-only glasses to small displays uh, to more advanced visual systems later on. 
And Google isn't doing this alone. Which brings us to Samsung. Um, Samsung's role in 2026 is quieter, but it might be the most strategic of all. Samsung isn't rushing out futuristic AR glasses this year. They're not trying to define the category on their own. Instead, they're positioning themselves as the company that makes smart glasses practical at scale. Displays, sensors, manufacturing, battery optimization. Samsung is watching how people actually use these devices before committing to anything ambitious. And honestly, that's probably the smartest move. Um, because here's the thing no one likes to admit. True AR glasses don't fail because the technology isn't impressive. They fail because wearing them every day is uncomfortable, socially and physically. You know, weight, heat, uh, battery anxiety, awkward interactions, the feeling that you're on display just by wearing them. Those are the boring problems, and 2026 is the year companies are finally fixing the boring problems. That's why you don't see anyone launching full spatial AR glasses this year. No holograms locked to your walls, no digital worlds layered onto your living room, not because companies can't build them, but because they know people aren't ready to live with them. Instead, 2026 is about learning how glasses fit into real life. Which leads to the question everyone is really thinking about. What happens next? <laughs> this is where 2027 comes into the conversation, but not as a hype year. Think of it this way, 2026 teaches companies how people behave, 2027 tests whether they listened. Aye, that's when we'll start seeing more ambitious hardware again, dual displays, deeper environmental awareness, more visual intelligence, but by then the habits will already be formed, um, or they won't. Um, before we wrap this up, there's one more thing worth addressing. I've seen some people say that if the US market tightens regulations, Europe will automatically follow. Right now, there's no clear evidence of that. Europe tends to approach these things differently, uh, focusing more on competition, privacy frameworks, and interoperability than outright shutdowns. Uh, what's far more likely is fragmentation, not a global freeze, and fragmentation matters, uh, but it doesn't stop progress. So where does that leave us? If you were expecting 2026 to be the year smart glasses explode, you might be disappointed. But if you're interested in the year smart glasses finally start making sense, this is it. This isn't the flashy year. It's the foundation year. And the companies that get this right won't be the ones that launch first. They'll be the ones people actually wear. I'm curious where you stand on this. Would you wear glasses that talk but don't show anything? Would a tiny display be helpful or just distracting? Like, yeah. And what would smart glasses need to do before you'd actually wear them every day? Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, I read the comments closely on videos like this. Um, and if you want to stay ahead of where this is all going, make sure you're subscribed. There's one use case I still want to push these glasses into, and that's coming next. Um, I'll see you in the next one.